All right, what's happening, guys? We're at episode 34 at the Homestead Shop Talk podcast with Al from Lumna Acres, Ben from Holler Homestead, and myself, Jason from So the Land. And today's topic, we do have a topic today, uh, which is uh, Homestead Junkyard Pile. Because all, all the homesteaders out there, we all have junkyard piles, I'm sure. And so when do we, like, what do we save, when do we save, and when do we let, know when to let go? Uh, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, but first, we're going to talk about our week. And did any one of you guys watch the Super Bowl? Nope. Negatory. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> it's funny though. Ever since I moved to North Carolina, I stopped watching sports. I used to be a big sports guy. Yep. Um but I think it's also because I have no TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a big big part of it. Yeah. You get rid of the TV and it's like, oh man, when am I gonna watch football? I can't just turn it on, you know? We used to live 15 minutes from the Patriots Stadium, and so everybody was big Patriot fans. Everybody would watch sports. We didn't when we lived down there. And the thing we got excited about for Sunday afternoon football is everybody was home watching TV so we could go out, do our grocery shopping, and all of our errands, and the stores were dead so we could get in and get out. It wasn't no hustle and bustle. <laughs> we're like, okay, sport, Sunday day, Sunday football, Patriots are playing. Let's go grocery shopping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I I ran out yesterday, uh, you know, like uh, maybe like eleven o'clock or something like that in the morning, and uh, like it was dead. There was no traffic. It was like, man, this is kind of weird. I mean, it's Sunday morning, so I maybe everybody's at church, and then I got to Lowe's and there's nobody there. It was like, wow, this is really weird. And it wasn't until I was like on the way home, it dawned on me. I was like, oh, it's Super Bowl Sunday. That's why. <laughs> that's why nobody's out and about. It's a big game. So, uh, yeah, it it was pretty nice. No people. Yeah. yeah. That's how it was where we lived. Every Sunday, I was like, this is perfect. Let's go get all of everything done that we don't want to deal with the chaos of everybody. And the, when you're in California, Southern California, that's the best time to go hiking exactly. is on Super Bowl Sunday because there's nobody on the trail. <laughs> yep. I was thinking the other day, I don't know if you, if you could find the stat anywhere, if you anybody knows, but so the girls went grocery shopping yesterday and they're like, the shelves were like picked. So it's like, I was thinking, I'm like, okay, so do you think the amount of food for the Super Bowl that gets sold is like as high or higher than like Thanksgiving or Christmas? Like, how do you mm -hmm. think the food consumption goes compared to a holiday? <laughs> I would say it's pretty high. A lot of chicken right. wings. A lot of chicken wings, yeah. Uh, I call it the, uh, the Western High Holy Day, which is the Super right. Bowl. Um, Honestly, if you're outside doing stuff during the time that game is on, it feels like you have the world all to yourself. You know, we live in a pretty quiet rural area, uh, but it was silent all day yesterday. It was weird. Like, it's eerie. It was like everybody everybody was gone. Yep. <laughs> it's crazy how mesmerized people can get by a, a game. So what's it, who, who wants to go first? Who did the most exciting thing today or this week? Probably not me. I dug holes all week. <laughs> I got a question for you guys then. What's the thing you hate the most about a stationary chicken coop? Do you have like mm, one thing you despise? The about a smell. The smell. Okay. Yeah, probably cleaning it. Okay. So me too. Especially so like we use a stationary chicken coop, you know, fall, winter, and you can't clean it out during the winter because it just freezes. So come springtime, it's like you're cleaning out your chicken coop through like a three foot wide door or like a four foot wide door. So we're building a chicken coop this week in our barn for the winter. And then we're going to use it as a, we're also going to use it as our chick brooder. So I'm like, man, how can I make this so we can clean it out easy? So I built another gigantic door. This one is almost 10 feet tall by almost 10 feet wide on a barn track door <laughs> <laughs> and then it's got another door inside of the door so i can have it's like a wall my whole wall the front wall slides shut and i made it so i can bolt it close and then i got a door to go in so then come springtime i can just take the whole wall and push it up against the other side of the so it's right next to so we got the chicken coop and then i got the pig pen so when i there and they're both the same size 
So I can take the front wall and just slide it in front of the pig pen. And then I can get in there with the tractor or a shovel and just clean everything out. Oh, wow. Yeah. That'd be I nice. Hate cleaning, I hate cleaning up chicken coops. Yeah. For me, it's like you're going through a door with a shovel. You spin around. You hit the door. Then you got chicken poo all over you or yep. all over the floor. <laughs> uh, the last time I cleaned out the chicken coop, I connected the walls so I could actually take the entire walls off and get the tractor in there and just scrape everything out. Yep. It turned a nasty, stinky chore into about, I don't know, 15 minutes of work. Didn't I didn't have to wear it. It wasn't all over me. I just picked not it all up. Your boots. Yeah, it's not stuck in my boots. And then I went and got a whole bunch of wood chips and I, I deep bedded that thing like a foot and a half deep. There is no smell. We've had tons of rain since I did that. And there's no smell. I love it. Yeah. And now you're going to get some awesome compost because all that stuff you'll be able to use in the garden or yep. continue composting it. So that door, I'm going to call it, it's a door wall. So it's 10 feet, say by 10 feet for easy numbers. I put tin siding on both sides. And then I put a three foot wide by seven foot tall, like regular man door in it, like a, a homemade pine one. And that worked out pretty slick. So that's something you could do. I know you were looking for something to do jason for your barn so you could always put like a big door and then a little door in the big door if you needed to yeah i need to see how how you did that one um yeah i can't picture that i have to I have to see the i have to see the video <laughs> let me see if i i'm terrible we we do good at taking videos but i'm not very good at taking photos so i'll see if i have a photo on my phone if i do yeah that's hard to do at the same time i'll well, yeah. it, but i'm <laughs> We've been talking about that exact issue. Like, I don't take pictures anymore. It's all done with a camera. Yeah. 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 I don't. I don't have a picture of my phone. I got videos, but no pictures. Be scre screenshots of everything. <laughs> right. I know. Like, I'll be talking to my brother, and he'll be like, "Well, what'd you do? Or send me a picture of this." I'm like, "Rich, I don't have pictures. Like, yeah. yeah, I might document it, but it's with video. It's not with pictures." Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> do you um, tap maple trees out over there where you're at? Is that a thing? We do we're not this year gina's parents do and they they did that they've been doing it for a few years and they got a nice they got a wood wood fired arch and they can do a couple of gallons a day we used to do it on a turkey fryer and we could do like a gallon it would take eight hours to make a gallon of syrup so we haven't done it just because we've been so busy with planning and everything sometime we'd like to build a little sugar shack and get a nicer arch so it take, doesn't take as much time. But it's one of those things. It's a long process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's you know, what I've heard. Yeah, it's an it's an all like you get up. It's early. Like you're gonna you're gonna get up usually like five a.m. Start boiling as soon as you can because you saved up your sap, and then you'll be going until five six o'clock at night, and sometimes later. Right now the in laws do it. So we just trade them like chicken and eggs and stuff for maple syrup. So yeah, that's kinda, a good deal right there. Right, it's a win-win for us. I know that would so be we, good. We always have maple syrup. I just looked; they brought over a couple of jugs this weekend, so we got. I think we got like two gallons or something like that in the house. Have you guys? Do they tap down your way? I know they do I, in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure if they do. I think they can, but man, you'd have to start tapping in December. Yep. Like we're already headed into spring. Yeah, maybe more we're in noticed. the mountains. Are your trees budding yet? Yep, trees are budding. Uh, really? Where you can tell spring is here is when all the daffodils start popping up. They're okay. They're yeah. they're on their way. Once the trees stop budding, you're done. Yeah, yeah. You our our Bradford pear trees usually are the first ones. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I was trimming one this week, and uh, I after I cut some branches down, I was like, oh man, there's like f almost flowers on this thing. Man, it's That's coming. Crazy. I don't feel like I'm ready for spring this year. Now, does that mess up with your like your fruit trees? Because you guys can still get frosts later. Oh, yeah, until, like, absolutely. The... Yeah. We've got uh, peach trees that, you know, they've been in for almost five years now, and they're big enough to fruit, and they'll be covered in blooms, and then we'll get a late frost, and it freezes every single one of them off. So, bummer. yeah, it's it's been a bummer. Yeah, because I know that, that could happen to us here. I couldn't imagine you guys because you're you guys can't really start your gardens much sooner than we can. You know, I'm sure Mother's there's Day. Stuff can, but your Mother's Day, and so we're is it Labor Day, Memorial Day? What's the first one? Uh, Labor Day. 
Labor Day. So we're Labor Day. So that's what I, I think like maybe two weekends after you guys or something like that. Hmm. That's crazy. I mean, you can start some stuff sooner. Like we're going to plant potatoes here pretty quick. Um, we're starting our, our garden planning and we started a whole bunch of seeds today. Uh, um, but generally like all the tender stuff, your tomatoes and peppers and stuff like that, that's all got to be planted out after Mother's Day. So Mother's know, Day is May 12th. I hope it gets cold again. I don't, I'm not ready for the warm. Yeah, I'm not ready to sweat. So you guys are May 12th when you plant and we're May 27th. So that's kind of crazy. You guys are that much warmer, that much sooner. That's you crazy. Still have. I'm sure in the greenhouse you could plant a lot earlier. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we can stick in the greenhouse. Um, and there's like little tricks that we're learning. Like we saved, I don't know, for like six months we saved all of our milk jugs and you just fill them with water. I had a theory. It was like, you know what? That's some thermal mass. If we have enough of them, it's a lot of thermal mass. I don't want to put 55 gallon drums in there. So we just did gallons. Well, I stuck a whole bunch of these gallons, gallon jugs full of water all in the greenhouse. Every single plant got at least two of them next to them. And it straight up kept stuff from freezing. Uh, even wow. even when, when everything got down to like eight degrees, uh, it, it absolutely stopped stuff from freezing. I, I tinted the citrus inside the greenhouse. Like I gave it its own greenhouse within a greenhouse. And then I piled up jugs of water all around all that citrus. And it looks like every single one of them survived that eight degrees. So, wow. yeah, there's just little tricks we're learning. Greenhouse growing's a whole new concept for me. Jason's going to be there with you next year. Yep. I got to get the plastic to, on first. Yeah, hey, you're going to get to grow in that thing this, this season, aren't you? Yeah. We're excited about that. The rain's already been planting it. Do um, you guys start anything yet? like any seeds in the house is it no we haven't started here? anything yet yeah i gotta figure out when i'm gonna put that plastic on i keep thinking it's gonna get cold again but <laughs> it doesn't right. seem like it's going to just wait I'm until there's for... like a 70 degree day and we can come over and get yeah. all that plastic up there well i guess i can talk about my week uh yeah i am uh currently working on the addition for our mobile home I'm working on foundation and so like all week last week I was digging out for the the piles um, we're pouring a concrete foundation for the piles to sit on and I'm trying to do it a little less shoddy than whoever did this place set this mobile home um, you know they just they just buried cinder blocks in the ground and that's what the piles are me I'm pouring concrete footers and building up from there getting everything leveled so I don't have to have, you know, six inches of wood shims on this side and half an inch on this side. Um, it's coming along. Um, this weekend we got all rained out, so I kind of, I get to work in the mud this week, but it was all right. Uh, that's pretty much what I've been working on. It's, I'm trying to get this structure built before Meg has the baby. Um, I don't know if I'll do it, but, you know, once I can get on to building i imagine it's going to go pretty quick are, are you just going back and forth to lowe's or you do a, you uh <laughs> like having them ship stuff in or what um i mean i've gone back and forth a little bit but you know like all the wood for the forms i've i've got all my forms are ready um i have a little bit more digging that's got to be done uh and then like yesterday when i was talking about going to lowe's i went and picked up my concrete got a pile of bagged concrete and i'm just you know, I'm just doing the bag to concrete thing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really not too bad. I think what's interesting is doing it all yourself. People don't realize how much money you can save. Uh, you know, at this point, crazy. like just the foundation, the way we're doing it. I mean, I think we're under 400 bucks so far. Like if we were having someone do this, we would have already have spent, you know, over a thousand easy. So, if anybody's handy out there, think about doing it yourself. <laughs> now, do you guys go mainly to Lowe's? Is that what's in your area? Short answer, yeah. Um, we have a Home Depot an hour away in any direction. Um, yep. we, we don't have one here. I would much rather shop at Home Depot, uh, but an hour away, you know, we're like 
10 minutes from Lowe's and it's just a short, short trip. If you need something, there's, yep. there's like a, a, a local hardware store that's just around the corner from me, but their prices are like five times what Lowe's is. Yep. But on the other hand, like that was who we bought all of our, uh, our finish trim and stuff like that from when we were building this place there's almost no comparison to the garbage that Lowe's sells when it right. comes to finished carpentry. Um, the, the quality of the, the lumber that we got from this local hardware store is just astounding. Like it's expensive, but when, when uh, the best way I can put it is buying the uh, just trim boards, one by fours and stuff like that. Um, the ones from Lowe's are half plaster Whereas the mm -hmm. ones from this hardware store are all lumber, like they're one hundred percent lumber that's primered. Like it's, there's no comparison. Yeah, yeah I guess it's the old adage: well, you get what you pay for. You do. What I just found out this past week because I've been going to Lowe's quite a bit lately. I've been I go, go there a lot, anyways. But one of the ladies stopped me. I always go to like the pro area. That's where I park and walk in. So if you sign up for a pro, uh, Lowe's pro account. This isn't a sponsorship or nothing. But if you sign up for a Lowe's Pro account and you have them, you can like connect your credit cards to it or your debit cards to it. And like you use that card, it'll automatically go to your Pro's account, I guess. Or you can have a QR scan your phone. But it earns points. So like you get like cash back to use at Lowe's. And then also, just come thinking about deliveries, I think they said like your deliveries, instead of being whatever, they're like 25 bucks if you wanted to get stuff delivered. So it might be something mm. to look into if you're making a lot of purchases they've tried to talk me into it um so it's there's... not the credit card it's not the pro credit card they have a new thing it's just the low it's like so like i have like the regular lowe's app and they just transferred that app to the pro program it's no credit card or anything so this lady's like oh you want it? i'm like no i don't want your credit card she's like no 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 this ain't a credit card this is just that's what i like, always think right she's like no this is just a rewards program i'm like yeah. okay yeah i'll sign up for that hmm. yeah i there's a lady there that uh, she usually runs like the the pro desk back there, and yep. she uh, she she's a viewer. She watches our our channel, and she's tried to sell me on it a couple times, and it was like I don't know, like I hate signing up for anything, but there are quite a few occasions where it's like you know if I had signed up for a rewards program like you know years ago, it probably would be paying off. So I don't are you know. Guys, are, you, are you signed up for Tractor Supply? Uh, yeah. Reward? Yeah. Okay. Because they get, I mean, we don't get a lot, but every once in a while they're like, oh, you got like free $10 to use. And I'm like, yep. Okay. Actually, there was one time I was, I had been shopping at Tractor Supply so much. I had like $150 in points saved up. <laughs> uh, it was like fence materials, T-posts, you know, stuff like that, you know, yep. And it just added up, and they're like, "Wow, you have a lot of points!" And it ended up being like half of what my uh, my purchase was that time. So yeah, it's it's kind of it does pay off. I know if you're gonna be buying all that stuff anyways, right? Yeah, mine as well. I do the same thing for Harbor Freight. You know, I buy the. I think Harbor Freight has the membership In, program. Yeah, the so Inside buy, Track like, Club. Yeah, it's like thirty bucks, and a lot of the times you can get like a huge savings on one item that you're buying anyways. And if you get the, like, if you use the member program, you save like say 200 bucks or a hundred bucks on that one item. So it's like, well, it pays for the 30 bucks and then you get all the other things throughout the year. What about you, Jason? What'd you do this week? Yeah, this week, um, continue working on fence build. <laughs> <laughs> More fencing. Those used to be, those, I know, those used to be my most viewed videos, but now I'm noticing that <laughs> I wonder if they're getting tired of my fence building. <laughs> That's a bummer. But too bad. Too bad. They're right. they're still gonna get it. <laughs> it's gotta get done. You can't it's what you're doing. I know. What do I do? Pay somebody to do the rest? Right. <laughs> can't do that. So so I'm doing fence building. So this time <laughs> And you're gonna you know, what? <laughs> I know. Uh, we're headed up the property now. So which I'm excited about. because uh, it's just different it's it's not really super overgrown, but the section that we started on was overgrown. It's just mainly really high grasses. So I busted out my uh, my DR uh, brush brush mower, which that thing is awesome. Um, last year, DR sponsored me and gave me that mower. And uh, this thing is 
I mean, it goes through like little trees. It'll knock them down. And <laughs> it's like a little tiny bush hog. Uh, and it's pretty cool. Like I like it. Um, so I just use that. And then um, our friend uh, Brian came over and helped me out. Uh, he just kind of moved to the area and uh, like two days before he's like hey if you ever need help with fencing I was like well thanks for asking a matter <laughs> so of fact matter of fact how about this Saturday <laughs> <laughs> so he came out which is did cool. he hesitate no oh, no like, oh no <laughs> no not at all uh, and so we knocked out 400 feet um, we just knocked down the the overgrowth and then now I got to put T posts and I got to put um, a couple H braces on that, that. And then um, hopefully I can do the whole 400 feet at one time. So did you run out of fence yet? I still have a roll that I bought. Okay. So I want to know if tractor supply will still give you the good deal they gave you last time. Yeah. I'm curious to tell too. Like I got to go when our, when our, uh, our friend, our friends work in there, our friend yeah. Derek. <laughs> he's the one that gave gave me the discount last time so i was like i gotta go when he's there <laughs> i'm curious too i'm curious too Great. that'll be interesting so yeah we did that and then today i it was raining all day so i worked in the barn and i've been cleaning out my barns because uh, i still haven't cleaned them out from the previous owner that had that lived here and there's just a bunch of horse stuff like nothing that I don't think it's worth saving, but just random things. And uh, there's this office that's inside my my 80 foot long horse stall. That's one you middle. use all the time. Yeah, the one that I have. Yeah, that we always use. Uh, in uh, in the one of the horse stalls, it looks like an office. Like somebody used it for, I guess, like an office because um, it's enclosed. It has a window and it has like a locked door. And uh, it looked like they must have hung like saddles, horse saddles on in there or it's something. Tack room. Yeah, there you go. And then there's this old freezer in there, right? So I never looked in this freezer. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, I need to clean out this room because there's like a bunch of stuff on top and stuff. There's just a bunch of junk in there. And I never really touched it. And I was like, I got to do it in the winter because I don't want to deal with snakes. I know there's snakes in this barn. And right now is the time to do it. So uh, that's what I did today. And I finally looked in that freezer. And I was expecting to see a horse head or something. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> all it was, it was definitely there was water in there. So I imagine at one point this freezer was on. Um, in the two years we've been here, it hasn't been plugged in. <laughs> so there was just nasty water in there. And it smelled like not it's i don't know what it smelled like it smelled like rotting potatoes or beets or something um but i think all he did was keep uh horse treats like horse treats um like horse um like supplements type stuff and it was like Probably all in bags and medication and stuff like that yeah so it was just all soggy it was just nasty and at least there wasn't any meat or anything no, it wasn't a horrible smell, but yeah, you couldn't smell it. You know, if it was closed, you couldn't smell it. So, um, me and Lorraine, man, I was like, I don't know how we're going to take this thing out. Cause this thing was, was pretty heavy. Plus it has some water in there. Um, but we did it. We had a dolly and we just like dragged it out. And, uh, this thing was so dirty. I had my, um, my pallet jack loaded up on the pallet jack and now, it's just sitting in my barn right now, but I got a fork. Well, the I noticed the plug is cut. I don't know why it's cut, but I don't know if it works or not. Yeah. I mean, I would have to redo the plug um, and clean it out for sure. But well, uh, before you get rid of it, <laughs> hit me up. Oh, I mean, yeah. that might be if it still works. I mean, that'd be kind of cool. Old freezers like that. That's like our old one we have in the shed. It's like from the 50s. A sucker still works. Uh, we have a really old one. Yeah, it's just super nasty in there. And, uh, Power washer. Yeah, yep. but I'm glad we we got it out. I mean, that's something I've been wanting to do since we moved here. Uh, it was just so nasty and dirty in there and so dusty. I mean, there's still like horse poop everywhere. 
that I'm finding. You know, old horse blankets, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so so cleaning that out was good um, and give me a break from, from fencing, and then probably back to fencing again. <laughs> after so once you, once you got the 400 strip done, you got to go like up. I'm assuming that goes up, then you must have to go back over and come back down. Yeah, four yeah. four hundred feet is probably like halfway up the property, and okay. then I probably got to go another four about another four hundred, and then then that's when you're at the very top where I want, and then we're starting to come hook around and come back down. Uh, now, when you come back down, do you have the front on the other side done? You got to like do the front, and then you know what I mean. Do you go back over in the front, or is that the whole front section fenced off now? The whole front one's done. I just okay. finished. So it's just kind of a big giant, sh- like a horseshoe that comes back around and then connect yep. to what I already did. Um, plus gates. I don't know. I got one more month in my deadline. Got to hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And then you got so green- bad. You got to get the greenhouse plastic up by then too, right? Yeah, plus that. So lots of fencing. Uh, but the good thing, I'm not putting as much as a uh, wood post, so I'm gonna do uh, mostly T posts. So that should be faster. Yeah, it'll go way faster. Um, yeah, of course, just like the corner posts are going to be wood, but um, but yeah, the T post should be faster. Which... Now you already have wood posts in there, right? In some spots. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's wood fo- uh, wood posts every twenty five feet. So why are you putting in T posts too? You think I need to do T posts? Like I was assuming I would do like one T post in between no, each each I post. Don't... So when we, I'd have to. When we at our other property, we like the guy who did it was we hired somebody to do it because we live on a rock pile. So he's got yeah. one of those hammer. He had like a hammer thing, and they just like pounded him in the ground. And he would go. I think he would go over. I think it was like he would every forty feet he would do a wood post, and then in between those he would do a T post. And then he stretched the. So it's it's. Quite, I was surprised. It's quite a bit of a span that he would go without putting. Yeah, the wood post in. So I don't even know if you really need if you need to put too many T posts in. Yeah, I mean, I've always read like I I did some research about it. I saw like eight to twelve feet between T posts. Okay, but a lot of T posts. I don't know. I, I was gonna see. I, I might see like where how that looks. You know, um, after you stretch it. Yep. And maybe not. Maybe maybe I don't need need the T posts. But right, I thought, or even. Uh, just- or maybe one in between the wood post. Yeah, that, that's that twenty-five feet yeah. pot. That's only yeah, that's a that's twelve foot span. Foot. I, that's all I would do. Yeah, that's what I was. So yeah, I just counted all the T posts because at first I was like, I need two T posts in between. But then after I looked at it, I was like, yeah, maybe not. So I need if I do one T post, you're looking at eighty T posts. Oh really? That's still a good amount. Things get expensive when you're buying that many. I know. I am now, thankful for these posts that are already here, though, man. Like, right? It would be now, way more money. Is that eighty to do the whole horseshoe, or is that eighty just for that one side? The uh, the whole horseshoe. Okay, that's not too bad yeah. then. Plus, uh, buying a few posts still, like for the corners and stuff. But yeah, I think I calculated it's gonna be just for that horseshoe part around twenty five hundred bucks. Okay, for fencing and T posts. Yeah, for posts, the fence, um, that's not including gates. Yeah, yeah, gates are freaking expensive. Yeah, they add up so, fast. Yeah, around there. But, you know, it's going to help me sleep better at night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but other than that, that's about it this week. You guys got all your chicks ordered for this coming growing season? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You too? Yeah, I just finalized everything Sunday. Yeah. Who do you go through for your chicks? We do McMurray Hatchery. Okay, so I guess we're all getting our chickens from them. <laughs> we've had really good luck with them. We've tried other places before, but we've had decent luck. But I've I've had the best success with their meat birds or their their broilers myself. Are you going with anything different this year, Jason? Are you last year you did the Red Rangers and then the broilers? Are you doing that again? Um, so I think this time we're going to do, we're going to go back to the Cornish crosses, mm-hmm. um, only because I think we're going to, we're going to start selling some this year Nice, and we're going to try that because they are, they are cheaper, you know, they're, they're faster cheaper than the Red Rangers. Yeah. You just can't beat it. You can't beat that. But I know what's going to happen. We, <laughs> we do this every year. 
you know, you forget, you know, right around when you're going to butcher the Cornish crosses, you're like, man, these, these, these chickens are nasty. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, why are we doing these Cornish crosses? Let's not do these ever again. We say that. Yep. And, uh, but then by the time we're ready to order again, we forget we say that. <laughs> I don't know if I'd raise it up. I don't think I'd raise anything other than the Cornish crosses. They're just, I don't know. They might not be pretty when it's time to harvest them, but yeah, they're just, they have a wicked good food conversion. They do good in pasture for us eating yep. grass. And yep. then, I mean, you have a lot, the feathers come out easy and you have a lot less feathers to compost. Yep. Yeah, I know. You can't beat that. No. And their meat tastes good. Yep. I think for me, the thing I like about them is that they're over and done with in eight weeks. Yep. Uh, the Red Rangers, I think we did 12 weeks, something like that. And I was like, man, that's that's a whole extra month. It's like, I, I was ready to do these a month ago, and they're still tiny. Yeah, we go like to nine to ten weeks with the Cornish crosses, just to give them that little bit right. extra. Yeah, but if but we try to do them earlier in our season, we don't do them through the summer because I don't think they oh, would yeah. last as long in the summer the summer heat. So they usually, so if we get them early summer, we'll be doing, like before it gets really hot up here, we'll be processing them. So it works out good to grow them an extra week or two and then they get the size of a basketball and they're nice and <laughs> plump. <laughs> you do turkeys too, Al? You're doing turkeys this year? I don't know. If we. I think I want to do them again this year. We, we do them every once in a while. I love turkey meat. Gina's not a huge fan of turkey, but I don't know. I love turkeys. If I had, a, if it was my choice, I would eat turkey just as much as chicken. That's a good man. That's exactly how I am. The same boat. Like Meg doesn't, she's not real wild about turkey. I love turkey. Like, I love turkey. It's, we it's didn't do turkey for Thanksgiving this year. And it was just like, oh man, like yeah. I miss the turkey. I love turkey. <laughs> I really liked raising turkeys, actually. Like, I don't know why. Like, they're such a dumb bird, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I liked them. They're just fun, especially once they, like, get used to you and they'll start gobbling at you. I I, I don't know why. I just liked it. Walk out the door. The and I like the, the noises that they make. The noises yeah. that they make. The little, like, qu it's like quiet. It's kind of soothing. <laughs> peep, peep, peep. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Everybody do your best turkey impression. Yeah. The first time we raised poultry, once we moved back up here, I got turkeys from our local feed store, and they came early. Like, it was, I don't remember what time of the year it was, but I was like, I'm not butchering these until closer till Thanksgiving. Well, the biggest one weighed like 53 pounds dressed. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a moose of a turkey. I had to cut it in half with a sawzall so we could get it in an <laughs> oven. <laughs> It was that it wouldn't fit in an oven. Wow, man! I had, to have a, I had to buy a special cone, and then I had the tractor, so I mounted it on the bucket of the tractor because it, it weighed so much. So I could like put it down like at like my chest height, but then I could put it. In, I could raise the bucket of the tractor up so I could <laughs> get it without having to bend. <laughs> man, the biggest was, one we ever did was thirty-four pounds, and I thought that thing was huge. I won't do one that big again. It tasted good. It was just it was just way too big. Yeah. It was overkill. It's like an ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> it cooked fast once we, once we cut it in half. It didn't take very long to cook it. I bet. That was a bonus. So let's talk about junk piles. Um, we all have them, right? You guys have junk piles? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Several of them. So how do we know? So at what point do we start getting rid of or what point do we're like, okay, time out. Let's... Uh, start throwing stuff away or stop saving or what like is it is there even that point that happens is that even allowed what's that throwing the stuff away yeah or, or do we just continue to save and save and save and save so my problem is i'll save and save and then i go through and i throw it away and then right after you throw it away that's when you need it like it'll be like i'll have something for like two years five years i'm like i'm never going to use this again i'm getting rid of it i'll give it away whatever and then it's like the next day or the next week where is that thing oh yeah i just went and scrapped it or gave it to somebody and then you go buy a new one see but how do I you have keep the opposite holding? problem i i hold on to stuff until i'm like drowning in it and then i finally start dealing with it uh i i i think i probably would have done great in the depression era because i just hold on to everything 
until like I reach the breaking point and then I just start purging stuff. Now you guys, so I, I this is one thing I kind of want to know. So like my issue is, is with our weather, if you don't keep it undercover somewhere, it's outside and it gets destroyed. Do you think your thing for saving stuff is different because you guys lived in California and it was dry climate? Like if you could just keep everything outside, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good point. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. If if it's not covered out here, uh, the amount of rain we get, like you know, I finally acquired some somebody else's scrap pile. I got a whole bunch of metal at a you know an estate sale. Well, it's just sitting out in in the elements. You know, I've got some tin over it to kind of keep the water off it, but it still gets wet. And I went and grabbed a piece of metal that was nice and clean a while ago, and it's just a pile of rust now. It's just like, oh, I need some more covered storage spaces. This is kind of sad. That's what makes it hard. That's my age. Just like, yeah. You know, like, oh, I want to save this, but I have nowhere to put it. Yep. And then it costs a lot to build buildings. So you, if you have a building just to store stuff, like people give me a hard time. like, park your equipment in a building. It's like, you know how much money it costs me to build this workshop? I'm using this for work, and I'm not parking my tractor in it. Like, <laughs> yeah. it costs too much money for this building to park something in it. Come on now. Yeah. So usually for me, like right around spring, I get I, I get these moods of of just throwing stuff away. Uh, I I try to save a lot too. Um, like right now, I have a bunch of wood, and I'm talking to like I save a wood's like 12 inches long. You know, <laughs> like it's a cutoff piece, and I'm like, eh, this is a nice two by six. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna throw it in the two by six pile, and it's there for a whole year. And I'm like, I'm going to accumulate more of this stuff, right? Like this was a whole year's worth of saving all this scrap. And then what about this year? It's just going to keep piling. And I'm going to, you know, if you like for me, I put everything in a stall, all my scrap wood pile. You have too many stalls. <laughs> I have too many stalls. That's not And they all have doors. So they, they're kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Yep. So it, they look organized, but don't open the door. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm now I'm at a point where it's like if I can't like walk in there and grab something without tripping then it's like okay I gotta get rid of stuff and I, right now I'm in it's that time of the year where I'm I'm going to the dump that's why I just yep. cleaned out my barns I'm just like well since I'm going to the dump I'm just I'm throwing away this little 12 inch 2 by 6 that yeah, I, I might use, I, I could, you know, rip it down or something and use it for a chicken tractor, but I, I'm going to accumulate more of this stuff. And it, when does it stop? Yep. It doesn't yep. stop. <laughs> I think on the wood, I'm kind of like, if it's not four feet long, it gets chopped up and goes in the wood boiler. Because, yeah, you, you can just get so much of it. Yeah. But then again, when you're doing a big project or you're doing a project, it's nice to have scraps. You want to save, and I try to save some, but not too much. I would think the metal would be a little bit different. Yeah. Because you could use little pieces. Well, like my problem with saving metal is, you know, say I miter a corner. I used to save everything. Like even if I mitered a corner of square tubing, then you've got this little staple looking cutoff piece. And I would even save those. I had buckets and buckets of stuff like that, just little scraps. And there's, there's metal that came out of my scrap bucket in California that I shoved in a box and brought with me. Cause it's like, Oh, I can, I can use it for something. And it's been sitting in another bucket here down in the bottom of the barn, just rusting. And it's getting to the point where it's like, okay, I can throw away little stuff like this. I'm obviously never going to use it, but man, I, I, I'm with you, Jason on the, on the wood thing. There is wood scrap stashed everywhere and not just like like lumber like i'm talking when i was clearing the woods if i found a tree that had a vine that grew up it and it looks like it would make a cool walking stick i'd cut it off and i'd stash it somewhere i was looking i forget what it was i was looking for i think it was my my big long level the other day i found like 10 walking sticks and it's just like <laughs> why the heck why the heck am i saving these sticks like they still have the bark on them and everything. I'm just like, yeah. it's clutter. There's clutter in every nook and cranny. And it's just, yeah, it's that time of year. It's time to start cleaning stuff. Yeah, and, and I think 
bef- like I do it in the spring and then just before winter. Um, so all through spring and summer and fall, I just save everything. And then <laughs> two times a year, I just get tired of it. And like, I'm just throwing it away. It is nice having it though, when you need it, especially if you only need like one or two pieces of something. Oh yeah. Like I remember when we first moved out here, uh, you know, we, you know, we didn't have anything. I didn't have scraps. Like I didn't have a, right. uh, bucket of bolts or something you know just like random things so he had to buy everything and i'm like man i just need a little piece of two by four and i I don't have it i gotta go buy it and now it's like i have so much of it that's you accumulate that stuff so it's kind of funny to be from that one extreme to now (laughs) i don't know is it is it age is it you know like what causes you to start squirreling stuff away like is it, is it like a, I don't want to go buy this again. I've got this scrap, so I'm going to save it. It might come in handy. Is it you just get to a certain age and you're just like, man, I've wasted a lot of stuff over my life. I'm going to hold on to it. Like what causes squirreling? I think for me, it was seeing the value in everything or what you could make out of it. I used to squirrel away a lot more. And then when we moved the first time, we moved a few hours away that was i had to go through everything <laughs> and you can't you can't take everything so it was kind of like after that i'm like oh man like i gotta do better with this this is terrible if i ever need to move again or have to move yeah. again you know and then you say that to yourself and when we moved back up here it'd been four years and when i you know i was in that mindset but i still collected a lot of stuff even though i told mm-hmm. myself i wasn't going to collect that much stuff but i don't know I worked in, had a mechanical garage, so working in there and seeing all the stuff and everything, I was like, you collect a lot. And it's like, oh, I see value in that. I can make this out of that. I got a bunch of, yeah. we did tires, so I have a bunch of lead weights. I'm like, oh, I could melt that lead down. I yep. could make this. I could make that. I got a five-gallon bucket full of lead weights. I still have them. I'm never probably going to use them, but hey, if I need them, I got them. <laughs> you know, moving here, uh, the guy worked on cars. I actually found where the bucket of lead weights is. Uh, moreover, the pigs found where the bucket of lead weights, <laughs> and I assume the bucket disintegrated out in the sun, right. and all of the lead weights, uh, you know how it yeah. is out here, it, the rain and the weeds cover stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, these pigs dug in this one spot, and I kept on finding lead weights. I have like 50 pounds of uh, tire weights. Like that's a, it was a bunch. I kept pulling them out every day, throwing them in another bucket, and so yeah, now I have a a bucket of lead weights. And I keep, I, I actually did melt mine down. I melted them into great big 10 pound ingots. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but yeah, it's why do we hang on to stuff like that? It could be a value someday. You might need it. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good point. I just need some molds. Yeah. It's hard to throw away like a really nice wood, like walnut, you know, the hardwoods Mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, man, I can make a spoon out of that, you know? Yep. Or I can make a cutting board out of that. I say, I think that like, so I worked at a, a furniture factory and we made everything from rough lumber and I've, you guys are kind of all craftsmen too. So you can see what you can take something out of like something like a raw piece of material or metal. And we can see what you can take that and turn it into. So I think yeah. that's probably part of our issue. Like you said, you can make a spoon. You can make, I mean, people make beautiful cutting boards out of little tiny pieces of wood that they glue up. Yeah. You know. Yep. I know. I don't know. I don't know what that is. And sometimes I think, you know, is this worth my? Because it, you know, I think it does clear clear your mind when things are not as cluttered, right? Like if yep. you're going to, oh, absolutely. You know, like my my stall, and it's like, is it worth my my brain space to keep this stuff, or can I just let Lowe's keep it for me? And then <laughs> if I want, if I need it, I'll go buy it. You know, I'll, I'm just going to throw away this thing and then because it's not worth my sanity sometimes. And I'm just like, I'd rather be, I'd rather be this space, be clean. And then if I need it, I'll just go buy it. So we got a Connex container and we put a bunch of shelves in it. That just, you know, we so I bought some shelving and some shelving we just had. And I organized that with tools and then it's all my miscellaneous it, Gina's like, it's not organized. I'm like, babe, this is how my brain works. Like, I got to have everything out. I, if I know I have something, I can walk in there. I get my flashlight out and I go, oh, yeah, it's right there. I'm like, that's my brain. It's just scattered. But it, to me, it's organized. So I can go in there 
everything's dry under cover and i love it this winter or since we've been building everything again it's like i was just running there like oh yeah i need this screw i need one of these i need one of these and it's all in there so i would say that'd be like the best thing like organize yeah with shelves i don't know i'm i'm loving having that so getting one of those would be it sounds pretty nice like just to save scrap and just throw it in there yep or just one of your stalls but get shelf units and just kind of organize everything <laughs> man if we get a connex over here i am burying that sucker <laughs> uh, not really i better i better correct that people be like don't bury them they're dangerous no i i'm just joking i wouldn't actually bury a connex i would build a real it, bunker <laughs> turning into food storage right <laughs> yeah you you risk of uh overfilling that <laughs> and then you need another one <laughs> you just have to constantly stay building stuff so you're going through and replenishing your stock and not letting it fill up too much on you or you just start um start your own thrift store <laughs> right yeah I, i'm pretty sure the uh the guy I always go to, I haven't been in a while. Cowboy is his name. Uh, he just, he buys junk and just sells it at his little store. And it's kind of like a thrift store, but it's kind of like, well, maybe a little more like a swap meet, but it's just one guy. It's it's <laughs> like a guy opened up his, his shop and said, come in, everything's for sale. Uh, <laughs> but man, I've, I've scored some pretty cool stuff there. You know, other people's junk. <laughs> And he's, yeah. he's made a couple bucks off it too then. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's just what you do. You just, you you embrace the uh, the pack rat and you just accumulate right. stuff until you can't walk through your building anymore. And then you just put a sign out front, invite people <laughs> in, and then you just start selling it. Yep. Yes, that's the plan. That's the business plan. <laughs> that's, the business plan. <laughs> that's retirement, guys. We got it figured <laughs> out. That's retirement. That's retirement. Everything Uncle... is in, in my 80 foot stall. It's right. for sale. <laughs> but Uncle Sam doesn't know about it, so he can't tax you on it. <laughs> Cash only. Cash only. I've acquired this stuff over the years. They don't know I have this inventory. <laughs> so I guess it really does boil down to, like, when do you let stuff go? When do you hold on to stuff? For me, I think it boils down to, can I go buy it again? That's the stuff I hang on to. Uh, if I can't go buy it again... Like I've got a whole bunch of rough sawn hardwood that I bought at an auction that was, it was some old man's stash and he passed away and his wife said, okay, do an estate sale, sell everything. And she sold everything that was his and moved away. Well, I got this whole pile for 50 bucks. I can't go buy a whole bunch of cherry and walnut lumber like this. And so that's the stuff I hang on to two by fours. I can go to Lowe's and buy that stuff. Generally, I'll I'll just burn all those scraps. I'll you know I'll get rid of them. Um, cardboard. That's one of those weird things. Like I was holding on to cardboard until it's like overflowing out of my shed, <laughs> and it was like this is so stupid. Why am I doing this? And so I've got two my brooders. Uh, it's an IBC tote cut in half. Both of those are full of cardboard. Uh, we're coming up on garden season. I will use that cardboard to, you know, mulch trees and stuff like that. And outside of that, we just burn the rest of the cardboard. Uh, there there are some things that we've just decided. It's like, yeah, we'll hang on to some junk, but only to a point. I'm only going to hold on to this much. Um, now, I think the thing that is kind of frustrating is there's a lot of stuff that we hold on to that I feel like we shouldn't. Uh, you know, odd odd bits of scrap like where do you where do you store all of your plywood scraps because i know everybody's got a plywood scrap like that's that stuff's so expensive it's a shame to throw away half a sheet it's just stuff like that it takes up so much space and there's never a good place to store it unless you got shelving i don't know there's just stuff like that it's it's a battle yeah plywood's like the worst because like you said it's expensive and then if you have half a sheet left then it takes up quite a bit of room just to store that yeah and if you don't have a good dry place to start, by the time you go to use it next, it's all potato rotted. chip. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, some of that um, cedar you gave me, Ben, from that that all that stuff you bought, I used it to trim out uh, my new door. So I used it. <laughs> good, good. I, I'm actually glad to hear you you use it for something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think I've only used like one or two boards from that entire pile of cherry. It's so like I I'll find something. Yeah. But. 
man There's still quite a bit of it you gave me but uh but yeah i at least used some of it <laughs> well, good i traded i traded some chickens one time or chicks one time for we have somebody a friend that's always like every once in a while like oh, i want some birds and he i know he's got a sawmill he does firewood or different stuff and i'm like i'll trade i don't want the money i'm like i'll trade you for lumber rough sawn lumber so we had a pile of cherry rough sawn lumber and i had kept it for i don't know probably four years and i was like then i was doing a building a chicken coop i'm like well i guess i'm gonna trim it out with cherry because i gotta <laughs> i gotta use this i gotta use this but i can't can't keep tripping over it so one of the coops is trimmed out with nice cherry that i planed down yes hey why not you got right. it you traded for it it's I better know. to use it that's right it's just sitting there yep. <laughs> fancy chicken yeah chicken track I mean, I chicken traded coop. chickens for it so it's kind of like symbiotic right like it's a good relationship there yeah for chicken or wood and build a chicken coop out of it so i thought if you're a homesteader i don't i don't think you could be a minimalist at the same time i don't think so. <laughs> i don't think so we did the minimalist thing when we lived in the rv and we were kind of in the tiny home realm honestly and then yeah. when we got here there are so many different things that you need to homestead. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got your, you know, things for moving animals. You got all the paraphernalia that comes with having animals, waterers and feeders and feed pans and this and that. Yeah. You can't, it's really hard. It's sorry. It's really hard to be a minimalist and homestead. Yeah, I know. I used to think that I used to think when we first started that, cause us too, we, we, we pared down a lot in our house and we were we were having that minimalist mindset and then uh once we moved out here i was like i don't know if this is possible to continue this <laughs> uh now i think there's a difference between buying stuff that you don't use and then buying stuff that you use maybe not every single day but you do use throughout the year and i think that's a lot of farming is that you know you're you have this stuff because Maybe you only use it in the spring or in the summer, but you still use it. It's 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 valuable. It's not being wasteful. Yeah, you're, you're still being mindful with what you're right. buying and what you have and why you have it. It's yeah. not just buying stuff to have it. And all right, guys, I think uh, I think we answered that question. <laughs> now do you, question? Feel like, do you feel like now you got to go clean out your barn stalls? Yeah, I need to do more clean out. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I did find a, a boom box. There was a boom box in that office. From like the Does 80s? it work? Yeah, it works. It's a Sony, uh, like a, and it has two speakers and it has a CD player and a tape player. Sure. Hey, you, you remember watching kids walk around with a boom box? It's full of D <laughs> batteries, weighs like 40 pounds. And now yeah. uh, it's sad. I see kids walking around today holding their phone, rocking out to it. And it's like, if you only knew, bud, no like way. if you only knew. It's well, not it was, the same, man. There was Walkman <laughs> for a while. Yeah. yeah. And then it was the portable DVD players. And then it was iPods, right? Is that what they were yep. called? The ones that yeah, like iPods. The iPods. It kept getting smaller. And then and now you don't need CDs or nothing. You just have streaming. Or what about talking on the phone when you were a kid to your friends? And you can only be on it for so long because if your parents had a call come in, there wasn't a call waiting at first. <laughs> and then when there was a call yep. waiting and you had a cord you were stuck to until the cordless phones came out. <laughs> Yeah, we just went to a we just went to an at antique store and there was a, a a legit payphone like a wooden payphone from the fifties there that they were selling, that it came from this uh, uh, department store in Charlotte. And part of me wanted to buy it. <laughs> hey, that's a relic. It said it still worked. Oh, that's we were, cool. The house we moved to in Massachusetts, the basement had a, it was like the seventies green rotary phone still, but you couldn't use it because. You can't dial with a, with an area code with those phones. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And down there, you got to use area codes, or you had to use area codes at that point to call anywhere. So you couldn't use the phone. You couldn't call out. I was like, well, come on. I want to just like use this for like nostalgia. And I couldn't even yeah. use it. It worked. Wow. Like you'd pick it up, you'd hear the you'd hear the the tone and everything, but you'd go to do it, and it, was, it wouldn't let you because there's just too many numbers. Damn technology. Oh, yep. <laughs> We're getting old, guys. <laughs> so, I, random question for you. Because where we live now, New Hampshire only has one area code. When I grew up in Massachusetts, 
I mean, I don't even know how many area codes we have. And when we were first growing up, you didn't have to dial the area codes with the phone number. Do you guys ever remember not having to dial area codes? Absolutely. Absolutely. I still have my parents' phone number memorized from the 90s, the 80s. Without uh, you the area know that, code. Yeah, without the area code. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I could actually recite that number still. That's weird. <laughs> well, the it, things yeah. that stick in your head. I can my childhood phone number. Now we're just like aging ourselves. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we better stop. We're like, hey, guys, how old are we? Yeah. Our daughter will be like something like, well, that's like from the 80s. Are you guys even born then? We're like, that's not that old. Like, come on now. <laughs> Yes, we were you know alive what? in the eighties. There was a one of those, you know, ignorant ki- kid questions that's just like <laughs> you just want to be offended just because. And they were right. like, uh, someone asked. It was like, oh, in the nineties, did they have color movies back then? <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, color TV was a thing by the nineties. I know oh, those crazy kids. <laughs> yep. Get off my lawn. <laughs> Imagine what, our, <laughs> imagine what our great grandkids will have, and what the technology will be then. I can't yeah, imagine. the Neuralink. You know what's going to happen? We're not going to. We don't have. We're not going to have to uh, film ourselves. All we got to do is put on glasses. Hmm. <laughs> yep. And so, we're just going to walk around, and that's it. <laughs> I just saw a thing. I was just thinking about what's all going to happen with food and everything. There was a thing. I think it's in Japan, some other country. They came out with fake meat grown from human poo oh gross they, they teamed up with like the septic well whatever you call it like, the septic facilities and like they went through everything they saw all the protein in it with from the leftover bacteria and they've come up with ways to make lab grown meat out of that oh, that's yeah. disgusting be careful uh, what you buy at the grocery yeah. stores i don't know what's yeah. coming out but there's something that some scientist is working on over in, like japan or why? And so I know right? that sounds like a pretty crappy idea. Uh, <laughs> just one more reason not to eat lab-grown meat, right? Yep, that's it. But they're like, oh yeah, they put they add soy in it for, for flavoring, and they put red food coloring in it to make it look red like meat. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> no, Ugh. that's a hard pass for me. <laughs> Get that. So be careful wow. what you eat. Read your labels. Yep. Yes. Or just grow it yourself. Well. On that note, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I appreciate everyone listening and watching this podcast. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have not, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and share our podcast with your friends and and, and your family. And uh, we hope everyone has an awesome week, and we'll see you guys next week. See you guys. Later.